Hi everyone, I'm Eleanor Shano. We have some things to show you that will boggle your mind, so promise you'll stick around. First, we always want to keep you up to the minute with the latest technology to make life easier and more fun. Our professor of electronics is standing by. And if you still haven't heard about the book that has been sweeping the nation, we've invited an expert to tell you the secret behind the secret. And finally, just wait until you see how med students are learning to perform surgical procedures. We'll get you connected to those topics and more next on LifeQuest. He's back. Here he is, one of our favorite guests on LifeQuest, the man who travels the country all season to bring us the very latest in electronics and technology. Dr. Frank, welcome. Nice to be with you, dear. Yeah. Good to see you again. Sometimes you bring to our audience mm -hmm. things before national television has them. True. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna, I, I went to three different, well, actually many shows, but Home Builder Show, Kitchen and Bath Show, and the electronic show, so we're gonna bring a little potpourri, a little bit of everything that was kinda of new. We're gonna start with the home. All right. And the first thing we're gonna look at, we have, a, um, we have a photograph of a new product that's made by a company called April Air. They are the leaders in research in HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So when people go to purchase air conditioning systems, they are the people that mostly are at the forefront. Now, what is this? This is the first time ever that they have, they, they basically developed this concept. This is a whole house dehumidification system. So instead of buying those little tiny dehumidifiers that you mm -hmm. put in the basement and all over the place and they mm -hmm. make noise mm -hmm. and they kind of have a clutter, mm -hmm. you put this where your air conditioning and heating system is in your utility room. You see the box that the two gentlemen are looking at? Small, isn't it? Yeah, it is small. And what's neat about it is that it will remove the humidity in the house instead of you using other dehumidifiers. Now, people have a real humidity problem, obviously, in the spring and summer months, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. we are into now. Mm -hmm. And one of the neat things that this does is it maintains that humidity level of anywhere between 35 and 45 percent. All right, what about in the winter months? In the winter months, you will need to add moisture to your home, so mm -hmm. April Air makes something called a humidifier. Okay. And it does the opposite of what this guy does. But the breakthrough here, Eleanor, is that this is the first time ever that one unit can be placed in the home in the central heating system area, you see, without the clutter, without the noise, without the racket. Because you know people that have basements, and this is part of the problem. You know, they, they put the little small units in, mm -hmm. 40 pint, 30 pint, mm -hmm. and they, they hate to even use them because they make noise as they're watching television mm -hmm. or interacting exactly. with family and so forth. So it's a, it's a breakthrough in that first time ever. Great, okay. okay? All right. Are we gonna move from yeah, we're gonna move, here? we'll move, this is also, I think I'm gonna put you over here. You sure? You're fine, oh, no, you're okay, fine. fine, no, you're fine. What is but this? But this is very cool. This is made by a company called Wild Blue. Now, it's a satellite dish, but it doesn't receive video broadcast. In other words, it doesn't receive TV like the other satellite manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Its purpose is single, and that is that it allows people living in rural communities mm -hmm. that are too far away from broadband or DSL, mm -hmm. which is high-speed internet access, to receive it via the satellite dish. So you erect this dish outside of your home, okay? Mm -hmm. Here's the modem here in the front, which I'm just, I'm holding up so our audience can see it. That's the modem, okay? And what's interesting is the National Rural Telecommunications Cooperative. These are the people that supply electricity through all the rural right. areas. The problem has been that students, for example, people that go to school with my daughter Stephanie live in rural areas. Mm -hmm. And they can't get internet access the way we can in mm -hmm. broadband. Oh, high I speed. know it's a it's a it's big a frustrating problem. it's a big problem. So what they've done now, and this is very affordable too, two hundred ninety nine dollars to erect the dish. Isn't it amazing it's how phenomenal. prices are coming down and down and down? Well, and the other thing too is that people are frustrated because they. So if you have a summer camp, you live out. See, okay. it's other purposes besides just the fact that people live in rural areas. You may even have you know a summer camp, but it's the first time ever that we can get broadband access. Brand to new, it. right? Brand new, and they just launched a satellite. Um, oh, I guess it was probably about a month ago in the western part, in other words, in the eastern part of the United States. So now the people in the Pittsburgh area and in western Pennsylvania, now they can serve over a million customers. I guess customers. there is so much happening out there that the manufacturers are spending a lot of money on research and development. They, sure. Everybody has to be out with something new all the time. Well, and what happens too is, you know, they're trying to fulfill a need. Mm -hmm. Here are people that go to work and their, their children go to school and they have broadband access. They come home and they have dial-up. 
So yeah. with that problem, you get into a situation where, you know, you just simply want to be serviced. Welcome to the hardware store. Right, this is hardware. Inexpensive way to upgrade the kitchen or the bathroom mm -hmm. with new hardware. These are all by Baldwin. Baldwin is from Reading, Pennsylvania, which is in our backyard, mm -hmm. so to speak, mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania. But the biggest thing that they brought to the industry, so you understand the difference here, is that most people stamped the brass before this company got involved in hardware. These people forge it. There's a big difference. When you forge something, you can get more detail. Mm -hmm. You have a better finish. The finish Real lasts quality, longer. Isn't and the it? quality is incredible. Well, just fill it. Just fill any of the oh. pieces that are on there. Oh. But Real these, there's quality. a series here of knobs and different types of hardware that are available. And the key is the, the finish. In other words, nickel is very popular today. Brushed nickel, brass, you know, a bright nickel, or even a um, uh, some type of a satin nickel too. It just depends. Yeah, and People never... like. Go ahead. We never realize how you can change the, the whole look of a room Entire by look. just changing the hardware. Absolutely. That's yeah. really simple to do and inexpensive as well. Because I know sometimes on this program, I'll have more expensive items. Mm -hmm. But again, this is a good way it, to it's, go. a, it's a great way to go. And the most important thing I say to people like you always know on my programs as an educator, make an investment. Mm -hmm. You can go, go to the discount stores and buy products, but buy something that's going to last forever. And the best part about it is 90% of their products have lifetime warranties. So if you... You know, if something happens to the knob, you just simply okay, replace it. Okay, what's next? This is from Lutron. This is lighting, lighting control in people's homes. It used to be very expensive. Today, mm -hmm. now you can put wireless lighting control in your home for $750, which means that you can control lights all over the entire house. How so, difficult to install this? You're well, what's probably you, going to spend $700 on the electrician to come to. Well, this is the interesting part about it. You can see me actually, this is the little dimmer switch here. This is called the Lutron, this is called Aurora. Mm -hmm. And all you do is you pull your existing light switch out of your wall mm -hmm. and you put this smart switch in its place. No wallpapering, no painting, no demolition. That's simple. That's simple. And see, that's where it has to be for people to enjoy it. Right. But it's made by a Lutron called Aurora. Okay, now we now, get to the little stuff. The little stuff, yeah. Of course, holidays and, and, and the fact that we're getting into the summer months and so forth, cameras are really hot. What's this over here? It looks like a fan. This is, well, this is, this is a, you know what those are? Looks like a fan. Looks like a fan, but what do you think those are? What do they look like? Since they reflect, come on, you, can, you know that. Solar cells. <laughs> and so what happens, this is a product called... If I said that, <laughs> my viewers would know. You had already clued me Well, in. no, I didn't, no, I didn't that. know that. <laughs> Anyways, this is called Solio. It's really cool what it is, Eleanor. It, this is the battery here at the bottom. But what you do, these solar cells, you place them in the sun, mm -hmm. and they charge the internal battery that's in this part of the unit. And now you can connect your cell phone or any battery-operated device to the Solio, and it will automatically charge it or keep it running. So you could so take it with, ball with game, you to the ballgame. Ball game. Absolutely. Right. Anywhere, even, even on a trip, $100 which is pretty cool, and it just simply folds, you know, kind of flat yeah, and so yeah. forth. Now, cameras, the only reason I want to touch cameras real quick is because these are brand new from the photo show. These, this is 10 megapixels, meaning that that means that we're looking at 10 million dots per picture. Look at the size. Look at the size, all small. Get smaller nice big viewfinders and so forth, as you can see. But that's what's happening with cameras today. These happen to be by Casio, uh, a lot of manufacturers. But bright viewfinders on the back is what people are looking for, higher megapixel rating. And this is really cool. I want to show you this. These are the new micro SD cards. And these are by, these are by Kingston. I don't know if, our, if we can get a shot of this. But take a look at this. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this out of the bottom. Look here. Look, look how, how small. Tiny. Look see how, how tiny? tiny? And that little guy that fell, here it is. I'm going to pick it up so our audience can see it's it. It's like a fingernail. Right. And that goes into cell phones today. It's going to go into all different types of electronic mm -hmm. devices. And the benefit is, look how small it is. It goes into this SD card so you can actually use it as a combination of a reader. And they introduced this guy, which is really nice, called the Traveler, the Data Traveler. Look at this. We have an SD card built into it, right? But there's also a two gigabyte memory card built inside this device. So the benefit, Eleanor, is that see, so you take this and plug it into your computer and it reads the card automatically, <sighs> which is kind of cool. Okay? Oh. Some, other, some other quick things that are yeah, kind of neat. Yeah, we've got All a right. couple of minutes. All right, this is a, a radio by Eton. This is really neat. It's, uh, it, they call it the Red Cross radio. It is AM, FM, weather band. Mm -hmm. Okay, all combined yeah. with a flashlight and yeah, so we forth. We should all have one. I don't have one in my home. I'm gonna get it. Well, it's one of those things that everybody should have. It's only fifty nine dollars, but the benefit is you have all of the different Absolutely. resources built into it. You should know that type of power thing. Power go out, or you have some right. weather, weather emergency. Oh yeah. Now you know people like to keep coffee hot, right? And mm -hmm. different liquids. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Brand new. This keeps liquids cold. Brand new. So you plug it into the USB port of your computer. You see the little USB device there, and it chills the cup or the can of soda, whatever, to 45 degrees. 
Oh, first time ever. We don't have enough USB ports anymore. <laughs> oh, oh, I know. Now, some other things. This is navigation. This is neat. This is by Delphi. Mm -hmm. And when we say navigation, this goes on the windshield. See, mm -hmm. on the inside of the car, it has a gooseneck so you can actually move it. When I turn this unit on, just to give you some idea of what happens, it's going to wake up. More importantly, what's really neat is they have an SD card here at the bottom. Now watch this. First time ever that you have the maps located on the card. So your upgrades, you see, new maps, new information, is just simply loaded into the bottom of the unit. It's mm -hmm. that simple. But what's really neat, look at all the different things you can do. Look, look at this. You've got navigation, music, movies, tunes, videos, just about a calculator, so it's got all of these other functions, including the navigation. Twenty system. seconds. What are you going to do with twenty seconds? Well, I'm, I'm, everything you good. Were, <laughs> well, we could yeah, we could show a couple of things. This is really neat. This is by Logitech. This is brand new. It's their wireless remote control unit. People have problems because they have five or six remotes. Mm -hmm. You can put all the remotes now into one unit. Look at this. How cool. Okay. People are becoming obsessive about tech. Technology. Well, they have you to. Have they to have, have to. Have to. That's right. You know why there's That's too many things out there to organize your life, and we right. want to use them. But back into the marketplace, so you'll have new stuff for us next time. Absolutely, Dr. always. Dr. Frank, it's always a always great to be with Love you. Thanks you for having here. me on. Okay, coming up, we're going to try to uncover the secret behind the best-selling book, The Secret. That's next on Life Quest. Well, some people say it has changed their lives. Some people say it's all a hoax. The buzz about this book, The Secret, has a lot of people talking. Now, we've invited Linda Varros, a holistic practitioner at Light Ring Center for Wellness and Metaphysics, to share her views. What do you think? Can it change a person's life? People are saying it has. Oh, absolutely. It, it, it's really about a shift in, in, in personal thinking, a personal processing of information. The thing I find interesting is it's become a catalyst to, to take all of this into mainstream, and people have been absorbing it. Uh, it is based on the law of attraction that if mm -hmm. we ask for something, and if we're positive, it, we can make it happen, that we can really take control of our own lives. Do you believe that? Absolutely. Oh, it's, it's true. I mean, I've, I've, I've been working on that sort of philosophy for years myself and have really found that it works. It's amazing. When so you... instead of saying, I don't want to be late for work today, you say, I want to be on time. It's all about yes. positive, right. not negative. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, how, how much how, how much does the power of attention intention really affect the outcome um, I think it's almost it we're talking about a ninety percent to a hundred percent difference in what occurs in your life I mean if we if you know do you ever notice people who are always complaining and talking about what's not working right in their lives and they just seem to get more and more of that and also uh, on the other side of that coin, there are people who just seem to have abundance flowing all the time and they're very joyful people. There is definitely something to the fact that they are attracting, and, and that's a law of physics, that's a law of the universe, like attracts life, um, just the same way that uh, gravity is a law that we can't ignore. Um, I think that, you know, the reality is we just don't think about this, we don't give it a lot of thought. We all have an energy field. and, and I can feel your energy. There are other people that I can feel their negativity. They're mm, taking my yeah, energy. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. That's true. 
I want to ask you about some other things that we all find fascinating. I'm going to ask questions that I, I don't know the answers to any of these. You are a clairvoyant. Mm -hmm. What is that? Is that a gift that you were born with? Um, it took me a while to recognize it as a gift. Right. Uh, was a, it? I was fearful of it. And, and that is really perceiving things um, before they happen or even picking up things that have happened in the past when you're around someone, uh, particularly if you're an empathic clairvoyant like I am, um, that tends to lead you to sense things that people have perhaps maybe just experienced. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, it's, it's, it is similar to being... Are you a psychic? Uh, I really, I don't like that term. I, I, you know, but yes, I guess some we all have would psychic say that. abilities. Yeah. We do to some extent. We we all have the capability when we're children, but that's one thing that we don't. A work lot on. of these things are being incorporated into mainstream healthcare, aren't they? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I have a list here of some other things. Uh, mental telepathy. Now we all, all have had that experience. Mm -hmm. I think about a friend that I haven't thought about for 10 years, the phone rings, there she is. Mm -hmm. That's a very simple, uh, uh, very simple example. Astrology, uh, astronomy versus astrology. Oh, that, that's a huge we, subject. We like that's, to read our horoscope, yes. even though we know it means it's so general. That's, I think that's what makes astrology look like it doesn't have value is because it's been so generalized. But don't forget the ancients followed that. It was combined with astronomy. And, and if you think about the fluids in the human body were, what, 90% water, 80% water, and the moon affects the tides, how could that not affect us? Yeah. Tarot cards. Um, you read tarot cards. I do. Mm -hmm. How can turning those little cards over tell you something about a person? Uh, you know the history of the tarot cards, and I'll just touch on that very briefly. Be they really have, they came from the, the Library of Alexandria, the burned to the ground. So this is centuries back in history. And that was, uh, that library housed religious knowledge of mm -hmm. man's history. And um, the tarot cards were developed around the, the sort of the priests, the elders, um, took that information and did visual uh, pictures, um, which really were the root of the tarot. And so it's the way you turn them over, right? Well, it's what shows up. And again, I think energy has something to do with yeah. that, that. And it's not fortune telling. It's not fortune telling, no, it really isn't. It's really supposed to tell you sort of the, your spiritual path in this life. That's the purpose for tarot. It's not evil. A lot it's of not this, a lot of this is, is becoming mainstream. People are, it seems to me that today people are searching for answers. Yes, we all are. Well, look at the fear that we live in. I mean, we really, even this country, uh, you know, there's concern that in 9-11, we all are living in fear. And if we're living in fear, then we really need a book like The Secret yeah. because we need to be manifesting positive okay, thoughts. So there, you've heard it from an expert. She says there is some validity mm -hmm. to the book, The Secret. Uh, I want to thank you. And I, I know so many of my viewers are going to have more questions. Uh, you uh, do work out of the Light Ring Wellness mm -hmm. Center, mm -hmm. which is in Blonox, in Blonox, and you have a website. Yes. So questions, come to our website, and we'll get you in touch mm -hmm. with Nancy. Thank you, Thank Eleanor. you so very Thank much. Thank you. Coming up, medical training has, well, it's gone to a whole new level. Find out how playing operation is helping med students get hands-on experience next on Life Quiz. Now, most people have heard of or even played the game Operation. Well, you are about to see something that will remind you of that. LifeQuest contributor Lynn Sawyer is here to explain. Play the game Operation? It's like playing doctor, Ellen. Yeah. <laughs> we won't go Tell there, me though. more. Tell me more. 
<laughs> what you're about to see is something that will remind you of that game, but this is no game. It's new technology for medical students, helping them get ready to practice in the real world. Take a look. Mr. Smith, can you hear me, Mr. Smith? Okay, he's got no puzzle. puzzle. Condition A, call okay. condition A. A medical emergency. Start compressions. And doctors try to revive a patient. He's got a pulse, stop. Give him some air. But actually, this yeah, whole right scene right. was staged. What was done correctly? You called people right away. Called people right away. Okay. What else? These aren't doctors, yet. They're third-year medical students. And the patient? It's a mannequin, but not the kind you see in a department store. You still want your fingers to be trying to lift up as much as possible. These mannequins are teachers, called simulators. OK, make sure that you keep the, the scope tight. They help simulate situations so that budding medics like these can learn life-saving techniques. I'll bend the, the edge of the scope up and you should see Gladys there. Tom Dongilly is the director of operations at the Weiser Institute at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center in Oakland. Weiser Institute is the, the an acronym for the Peter M. Winter Institute for Simulation, Education and Research. We're a medical training and education center that focuses on simulation-based learning and education. Medical simulation hasn't been around long, only about 10 years or so, but it started with an idea from University of Pittsburgh physician Peter Saffer. Saffer is considered to be the father of CPR. Peter Saffer approached Osmond Laridal, who was a doll manufacturer in Norway. He wanted to create mannequins that helped train people on CPR. Uh -huh. So he approached this doll manufacturer, and, and that was really where the recessa anti-CPR mannequins came from. And approximately 50 years later, physicians from the university here also approached Norway and, and Laridal Medical Corporation with the idea of, of an advanced patient simulator. Today, the University of Pittsburgh is in the forefront of medical simulation training. So the first simulators that were out in 1994, 1995 really focused heavily on uh, anesthesia type of, of training. What the simulators of today focus on, they're more broad. We can start to train emergency medical technicians, paramedics, Medics, all the way through to student nurse anesthetists, medical students, and, and continuing all the way through to board certified physicians. How do these things actually work? They are computer driven mannequins. What that means, there's an interface between the person who controls the responses and the actual simulator itself where the trainee is. So there's always a person who's running the simulator, if you will. You see how much more the chest rises. What do That's medical right, students gain really from right this experience? One of the biggest benefits yeah, to a medical exactly. student one, that takes courses here at Weiser is the fact that they can come down here in a non-threatening environment and learn procedures, some basic, some advanced, before they ever need to do one on a patient. Simulators can be programmed to recreate a variety of crisis situations situations that students may rarely see in their training with human patients. The benefit is you get much better trained clinicians at your bedside. You get a level of a standard of education and care um, that centers that don't have this type of training can't supply you. And at some point you're going to need to turn the scope up or down as we work our way through the airway. Okay. So this needs to be straight. There are specialized medical needs that can be addressed by simulators. For example, the military uses simulators to teach medics how to treat injuries sustained in battle. Emergency response teams also learn how to care for people hurt by weapons of mass destruction or bioterrorism. The possibilities are endless. Do you actually do surgery on these? There are models to do surgery on. Unfortunately, these particular ones we don't do surgery on, but there are also surgical simulators out there. Do they bleed? If you want them to, they can bleed. Uh, so we do run courses where if they make incisions or at a certain point during the, the training the simulator needs to bleed, we can make them bleed. And there are other real life features too. As you can see, she breathes. Dr. Paul Frampas uh, is interim director of the she Weiser breathes. Institute. Uh, she can be intubated, which means putting a breathing tube in. Uh, she could be defibrillated if her heart were to stop or she were to go into some kind of rhythm that would require that. We can monitor the vital signs. This helps us to monitor how much oxygen she's getting. Uh, you can see on the screen that we can see her heart rate, her blood pressure, her temperature, and a lot of sophisticated monitoring that you would find in any intensive care unit in any hospital. She also turns blue when she gets uh, has trouble breathing. So she is state of the art. 
she is she is that. So this is mom. This is mom. Uh, this is a state-of-the-art obstetrics mannequin, and uh, it can actually give birth to a baby mannequin. Uh, that way, uh, medical students, uh, nursing students, nurses, and young physicians can learn the uh, intricate art of delivering a baby and assisting in that process. Different types of uh, uh, complications of birth can be simulated, uh, and we would expect the trainee to learn how to manage them. You see the little baby in there. Yeah. Uh, you see the umbilical cord uh, connected to the baby and you see the placenta because all of this is knowing how to deal with all this is, is part of deli the delivery process. This is just amazing. What has been the student reaction to uh, the simulation? One of the most gratifying things uh, happened just recently. One of the cases that we simulate in the difficult airway management course that we teach emergency physicians sometimes uh, is decision-making process on when not to do a procedure. And uh, one of my former residents just came back to me and said, I had the exact same case happen to me at the hospital where I work now, and I knew if I put that guy to sleep, bad things would happen. And when, when I, that, that is one of the most gratifying moments that I've had thus far in simulation. Charging. Everybody clear? I think it's great. I mean, you obviously can't do this with real patients, so this is the next best thing. You can practice failing, and there are really no repercussions. Um, so it's been good. You kind of figure out what you do wrong, do it again. The next time, you hopefully do it better. With the benefit of the technology, I think it would be a disservice to our patients if we didn't take full advantage of these opportunities. Since the Weiser Center is the leader in the world in simulation technology and training, what does that mean to this area? What it means is that this, this area of medical training, this medical center, will continue to be leaders in this field, to be able to advance even the field that we're in right now and become pioneers in other areas of medical simulation. UPMC and the University of Pittsburgh also have simulation facilities at two other locations, Pitt School of Nursing and McKeesport Hospital. And the university also plans to open another simulation facility in Palermo, Italy. So this type of technology is quickly gaining popularity, Eleanor. Lynn, I, I think the thing that struck me most was the, the enthusiasm that the doctors had. Oh, they're they very are passionate. passionate about what they do, and researchers are constantly reevaluating the simulators, and they make them more realistic every time. So the future is bright. Yes, it is. And I think the whole thing for me was that I didn't have to be a guinea pig. <laughs> you know, well, not just me, but I mean, uh, they have to learn. Absolutely, and it's better than having 12. 12 med students standing around a patient's Right, but bed. I mean, this gives them a hands-on opportunity where they don't have to worry about that life and death situation. Well, they're looking and they're learning and they're trying things for the first time on a simulator. Thank you so much for bringing that to us. Uh, thanks to Lynn, and uh, if you'd like any information about anything you've seen here on LifeQuest, just check out our website, wqed.org, or you know you can always reach us by dialing 412-622-1575. Just make sure that you leave your name and phone number so we have a way to get back in touch with you. I want to thank all of my guests for joining me today. We hope you stay connected with us each and every week. I'm Eleanor Shano. Remember, good years start right here. Be well, everyone. I'll see you soon.